Well, that was terrific. Thank you so much for being with us. We now have about 15 minutes of time where you can ask questions, comments, ideas, but to contribute to this uh, excellent opening presentation and keynote address. So um, I open the floor. I assume there's people with microphones here, back here, over here. And I can't, the lights are so bright, I don't see you very well. So I'm going to ask you to uh, stand, comments. And wave your arms. Ah, back here. Hi, John. Robert Levin, how are you? Hello. Nice to see you again. Um, I'm going to the World, World uh, Mobile Congress, which is the largest uh, conference of uh, mobile entrepreneurs on the planet. And they're now giving awards for uh, applications that provide social benefits. So that's a major mega trend in the, in the emerging markets for cell phones. And I, and I really appreciate your comments about the role of cell phones in economic development. So my question is, how can, uh, what kind of hybrid business models would you recommend for entrepreneurs to adopt in public-private partnerships with foundations to, or with governments to enable governments, just as you pointed out in the example of uh, bacteria generating electricity, what kind of public-private partnerships or new hybrid business models would you recommend for entrepreneurs in the mobile industry or other vendors of clean technology or other, other technologies to adopt uh, in, in, as we see uh, that incentives have to be built into, the, into a new form of capitalism that incentivizes uh, new behaviors and, and new flows of information to enlighten people about the technologies that are uh, available for adoption? Well, that's a great question. We're watching the Americans at this moment reinvent capitalism. The, uh, <laughs> It's fascinating to see when a crisis truly rivets people's attention, how creative they become. Uh, in the arguments going on today and tomorrow, and for the next four or five days in Washington, it's become clear to a lot of people that if you're really facing a significant depression, absolute economic devastation for many people, look at the unemployment figures, there's a sudden change in awareness. And at the very top of the list, efficiency and saving. We're watching a lifestyle change. Can't continue in the United States the way it has. It just can't continue. You have to begin to see in a different way. An example, if you look, well, I fought my way through traffic in New York this morning. If you look at the incredible wastefulness of the way we've designed cities, buildings, water distribution systems, everything we built was thrown up in a hurry, and it's immensely wasteful. Just paying attention. Anyone in Africa is seeing the waste. Just what's thrown away is, is who are these people? So I think there's a, a change that comes. So that's where the ability to see that change, that's where the data acquisition capabilities. I mean, it's important for everyone to realize this little thing's a radio, and it speaks to the towers all around us every quarter second or so. It says, I'm John, I'm here. And six of them talk about me behind my back because they know how loud the signal is from this to them. And the one that gets me the loudest says, I've got him, you all leave him alone. If one, someone wants to call him, I'm the antenna that's going to talk to him. And if I move 50 feet, the other one gets a little louder. And it's, no, no, I'm in charge now. So behind us, all of us, every person in this room with a cell phone on, it knows where you are. So knowing where something is and combining that with this location has this particular kid with a fever or this amount of water being used or the tree that's absorbing far more water than it should cut off the water supply. The micro location and micro identity combined together are the most powerful tools for efficiency. And you can say in these public private partnerships, public, you would like very much minister of health to effectively efficiently know where you best deploy those people to respond to a 
epidemic to an outbreak to some, and if if you have the knowledge you're efficient so i think that's the crux i would look at every existing institution to see where you could bring these new tools of efficiency and understanding to bear to save money there's another undercurrent of it police states love this information so there's a side to this where everyone knows where you are all the time and you never erase it as I say to my wife, yes, I, I, I did go to Marin. I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you. I, you know, so all your little life trips are mapped in a database someplace. And that can be a tool to be used in many ways. We have to be aware that this power of information does bring with it sometimes too much information. But if you're looking for those areas where you can really make a difference, I think thinking about ways where knowledge if we just map the water use of UNICEF around the world, you'd see things you didn't realize. No one really knows how much water they use. The moment you see it, you change your behavior. So we're, gonna, we're in the behavior changing business, and in that, in that dimension, we'll use any tool we can to make it clearer to people what their impact is. That's the debate about carbon pricing. The moment you see how much carbon you emit, and there's a price on it, you change your behavior, and that's, that's, those are the tools we're trying to, trying to devise.